How to use caching in .NET 8 to boost performance, something every developer should know. Welcome back to Startup Hack. With my 25 years of development experience, here at Startup Hack, we turn beginners into full stack developers in as little as three months. Today, exploring the powerful world of caching in .NET 8 API. Caching is a critical technique for improving the performance and scalability of your application. So let's delve into five key points to understand about how caching works and why it's essential for modern development. So number one, what is caching? Caching involves storing copies of frequently accessed data in a temporary storage location. This allows applications to retrieve data quickly without repeatedly accessing the primary data source, most commonly a database. By doing so, caching reduces latency and enhances performance. In .NET 8, caching mechanisms have been optimized to provide even faster caching and more improved efficiencies. So number two, types of caching. There are several different types of caching available in .NET 8, including in-memory cache, distributed caching, and response caching. In-memory caching stores data within the application's memory, providing the fastest access times. Distributed caching, on the other hand, stores data across multiple servers, making it suitable for large-scale applications. Response caching stores HTTP responses to reduce the load on web servers and improve client-server performance. Number three, implementing in-memory cache. In-memory caching in .NET 8 is straightforward and involves using the memory cache class. Developers can easily add and retrieve data from the cache using simple key value pairs. This type of caching is ideal for scenarios where data needs to be accessed quickly and frequently. However, it's important to manage the cache size and expiration policies to prevent memory overflow. There's other considerations to look at when using in-memory cache. Number four, using distributed caching. Distributed caching in .NET 8 leverages external cache stores like Redis or SQL Server. Most commonly see Redis here. This type of caching is beneficial for applications running on multiple servers, ensuring data consistency and availability. Implementing distributed caching requires configuring the cache provider and managing the connection settings. This approach helps in scaling applications and maintaining higher performance even under heavy load. Number five, benefits and best practices. Caching significantly improves application performance by reducing database load and accelerating data retrievals. To maximize the benefits of caching, it's crucial to identify the right data to cache and set appropriate expiration policies. Additionally, monitoring caching usage and performance helps in fine-tuning the caching strategy. Adhering to best practices ensures that caching remains effective and contributes to the overall efficiency of an application. A great example for caching is some of your application's configuration settings. If these are being stored in the database, make sure you're using a caching layer, either at the application layer or in the in-memory, or even using something like Redis if you have heavy settings differences, like if they're per client or something. But if these settings don't change very often, this is a great example of where to use caching. So what are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I love having good, healthy discussions, so make sure to leave a comment down below. I always read them, and I try to answer every single one of them. So make sure you leave a comment and like and subscribe. Here at Startup Pack, we love training software developers. With my 25 years of development experience, we take people with zero experience and help to train them to be ready to start as full-stack software developers in as little as three months. So make sure to check out the link down below or go to StartupHack.com today.